how does the Easter Bunny stay healthy? Exercise. <laughs> You're watching The Icing Artist. This Easter Bunny design is almost as popular as that unicorn cake. You know, that unicorn cake that everybody was doing? So I'm gonna show you how to make it. I, of course, started off with some Easter colored cakes, pink, blue, and yellow, because I thought that would be really pretty and colorful inside the cake. This is very white on the outside. I just layered those up with my buttercream icing and gave it a nice crumb coat to kind of seal all those colorful crumbs inside the cake. Once I was done with my crumb coat, I gave it a nice thicker coat of icing starting on the top of the cake. I just kind of like adding icing on and smoothing it around and then lightly ran my offset spatula around the edges of the cake, just making sure it was perfectly smooth. I will leave all of my recipes right up here. You can just click the I. Now, first things first, we need to make those ears because they are gigantic and tall and it's fondant that is floppy and these need to stand stiff. So I'm gonna make them now. In order for our fondant to dry hard, I'm gonna add some Tylos powder into it. You guys can also use gum paste. Just gonna roll that out nice and thick. And then I just made a little template for myself for how to cut out the ears because otherwise I end up cutting out the fondant like five different times and they never end up looking right. And just use a sharp paring knife to cut out the shape of the ears. For the little pink part going inside of the white part of the ear, I just cut a smaller template and cut that out of some thin pink fondant. Layered that up using some water to glue my fondant together. And to keep these ears from like falling apart, we're gonna add some flower wire into them so they'll stand nice and straight into the cake. Yes, you do need flower wire or skewers or popsicle stick or anything to basically help hold those ears straight up. And then to give it that adorable like floppy bunny ear look, I just folded the ears over slightly and then used some tissue paper to help hold it in shape while it dries. Set that aside. By the way, we just hit 1.5 million subscribers. If you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I mean, 1.5 million other people have. Now for that little like cotton ball tail, I was kind of stumped. I didn't know how to make like that really cute cotton ball texture and I'd already used up all my white icing. So I just looked around and tried to figure out, okay, what, what do I have that can help make that texture? And I grabbed this like tree bark textured mat and it worked out really well. Note to self, tree bark texture also doubles as a bunny tail texture. But if you do have some white buttercream left over, you can just pipe a little fluffy tail. And then added that onto the back of the cake, which is just really the side of the cake that looks less pretty than the other sides of the cake. For his little feet, I start out with some large balls of white fondant and just flatten those out using my rolling pin. I then cut these little kind of toe lines in them and then define that more using my veining tool and just added some little pink circles. Now last year's Easter cake, I made a crazy surprise inside where it was like a carrot garden, except the carrots were right down into the cake. It was awesome. You guys are gonna wanna check that out. I will leave a full playlist to my other Easter cakes right here. You guys can just click the eye. Seriously, super cute though. Now for his little kind of rabbit chops. I made them the same way as I made the feet and just flattened out with my rolling pin, except this time I added the cute little pink nose. I added some toothpicks into the chops and kind of pushed that into the cake. Now I use toothpicks because it's a buttercream cake with heavy fondant details. And if you try to add those heavy fondant details, gravity is not your friend. It's gonna be pulling those details down. If it was fondant on fondant, the water would help kind of adhere and glue it together. So I like to be on the side of like caution and you know, make sure that everything's not gonna fall off the cake. And for its little whiskers, I just used some black food coloring and painted little toothpicks stuck those into those little chops. And of course, when you're ready to cut this cake, you're just gonna pull that right off, as well as the ears. But let's be serious, nobody wants to eat a big chunk of fondant anyways. And for those adorable bunny slash, you know, unicorn iconic eyes, I just rolled out some black fondant into a little log and tapered the ends. I then used my hands to kind of push it into that adorable shape and glued it on using some water. But I'm always careful not to add too much water to like black details because you don't want the dye to bleed through onto the icing. And now that our ears are nice and dry, I'm ready to stick those right into the cake. Top it off with some buttercream grass and you are done. I cannot believe how cute it came out. It looks super adorable. I hope you guys really enjoy learning how to make it. And if there are any other cakes that you guys wanna see me make, comment down below and let me know which one you'd like to see. Don't forget to check out more videos over here. I will leave links. And don't forget to come back here again next week so we can make something else in the cake. Happy Easter, everybody.